I'm gonna glove up. Call me Dr. Chorizo. Hi, I'm Alon. I'm a pro chef, and these are my $170 french fry ingredients. Hi, I'm Emily. I'm a home cook, and these are my $13 french fry ingredients. Uh, excuse me? Oh, ah, oh, all right. Bye-bye. <laughs> this should be interesting. Oh, hello. The fries I was planning to make were queso fundido, chorizo verde, crinkle cut french fries with salsa cruda. For my chorizo verde, I was going to grind my own pork and I was gonna flavor it with a lot of Mexican herbs and spices. I have so many spices and uh, this mysterious ground meat. I had these great rusted potatoes to use for my crinkle cut french fries. I don't see any frozen fries, which is disconcerting. Topped with queso fundido made with three kinds of cheese, queso Oaxaca, queso asadero, and queso chihuahua. A salsa cruda made with fresh tomatillos and serrano peppers. What are these leaves? What is this cheese? Pumpkin seeds? Served with ripe avocados and flour tortillas. Is this a fries episode? They were gonna be the best french fries you've ever had in your life. With Emily's recipe, I have ingredients that are a little more simple. It might not look like much, but with a little love and a little technique, we can make some magic happen. If I had to guess, this would probably be around $18. Ah, oh, come on! <laughs> I would say that this is probably $87. $170? I have Chef Alon's book, but all I have is ingredients, no instructions. I know there's a million ingredients in this and it could be a little overwhelming, but broken down step by step, it'll be quite easy. Queso fundido with chorizo verde, crinkle cut french fries, and salsa cruda. I certainly know what one to two of those things are. Can I talk to Rose? Hi, Rose. Emily, how are you? How do I make chorizo? <laughs> You're making a loose chorizo verde, which means everything's going to look green. So first let's take your peppers. So you have poblanos and serranos, open them up, take the seeds out, put them in a blender, add the pepitas, which are also a beautiful green and a little bit of vinegar and blend it together to make a paste. Pumpkin pepper paste, pumpkin pepper paste, pumpkin pepper paste. Take it out and chill it down while you get the rest of the ingredients together. I'm going to put you in pork. All your green leafy things, you're going to blanch. That's gonna set the color, it's gonna make it a really vibrant green. So you have things like parsley, spinach. The next one is gonna be cilantro. Epizote, as well as hoja santa. So you need some boiling water, add them for about 20 seconds, take them out and put them in cold icy water. Blanch, 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 blanch. It's the blanching song, everybody. Then you're gonna take them out of the water and put them in a blender, whiz them up and then set that aside. And then you're going to take your whole spices, cumin and black pepper, clove and allspice, coriander, and you're going to toast them. All right, I toasted my spices. Add them to the powdered spices that you have. Yeah, I'd say that's oregano. Salt, bay leaf, onion powder, garlic powder, a little bit of cinnamon. Put all of them together into a spice blender. That bay leaf has been destroyed. You're gonna do so well with it. Thanks, Rose. First thing I'm gonna do is marinate my chicken breast for my crunch fries. We're gonna start by adding a little salt, two teaspoons of ground cumin, chili powder. Flip the chicken, do the other side, and we'll let this sit overnight so all the spices really penetrate the chicken breast. Then we'll pop it in the fridge overnight. Friends, we made it. We're finally making chorizo. So uh, the first thing I need to do is just mix this stuff. All right, and piece number two. These are my herbs and greens that I, I blanched and mixed up. And then I have my combined spices that I toasted and ground, and we're just going to mix this all together. And now I just have to put some of my paste into my pork. I'm gonna braise my chicken. Let's prep our veg for the braise. Uh, we're gonna julienne half an onion. Now we're gonna julienne our jalapeno. Cut it down the middle. And we wanna remove the seeds and the veins from this to kind of remove a little bit of that heat. And there you go. All right, now let's do the tomatoes. We're gonna strain the juice from this, reserve the tomatoes for the salsa. The liquid we'll use as part of the braising liquid for the chicken. 
I'm just squeezing these out to uh, get as much juice out of them as possible. There's a lot of acidity in these tomatoes, so that will help balance all the spices on the chicken. It'll also add more flavor. I feel like this is the moment of truth in some ways, but then I remember that there's like 800 other things we're gonna do. <laughs> and I'm just gonna like mix this together. I wanna make sure that my pork is fully covered in all the flavorful stuff that I've got going on here. All right, and that's my chorizo made. Now it's time to cook it. Now I'm gonna brace my chicken. We're gonna add two tablespoons of oil. Then we're just gonna let the oil heat up, so that'll take a second. Woo! There we go, that's oh, yeah. the sound. Just let it be. The more you move it, the less it sears, so you just wanna let it do its thing. All right, I'm gonna let this chorizo cook without touching it for a few minutes. It looks nice and dark, so we're gonna flip it now. You see all the spices are kind of locked in there. I'm gonna set it aside while I saute the onions and the jalapeno. Add the onion and the jalapeno. I don't really want any raw flavor in there. I'm just gonna cook it until the onions are cooked through and that'll add a little sweetness that will balance quite nice with the uh, chili powder and the cumin. The jalapeno peppers are also bringing their own little voice to the dish. All right, this is looking beautiful, nice and brown, so I'm gonna start flipping it around. I want to sort of preserve the clumpage, you know? Now I am going to add the tomato broth to it. What I'm doing is scraping the bottom of the pan to pick up all those little bits and pieces left behind by the chicken and the peppers. Those will infuse with the broth and just add more depth and flavor to it. Now that I see my sauce starting to bubble, I will add the chicken to that. So this is gonna be a brace. What it kinda is, is cooking something in liquid in the oven at low and steady so it doesn't dry any protein that you are trying to cook. Chicken breast tends to be quite dry, so this will allow the chicken to remain quite moist. All right, this is cooked. I'm gonna scrape it off my pan, put it in my bowl. I'm just gonna toss a little extra salt on there. All right, just like Rose said, this is my chorizo. I'm gonna cover it in foil so it doesn't evaporate all the liquid as it's cooking and then put it in the oven at 350 degrees. This is gonna give me a really moist chicken breast. All right, next up, salsa cruda. Onion, garlic, delicious. And my serrano peppers, tomatillos, and cilantro. If I were to describe what I'm looking for, I would not be totally sure. Pulse it until chunky. this in my bowl. Now I'm just going to put lime and salt on this to my heart's content. It's gonna mix. Delicious. All right, this is my salsa cruda. Let's get going on the next thing. So now my chicken is done and it's time for me to shred it. I can smell the nicely cooked peppers, the sweetness from the onions and the earthiness from the cumin. I find it that it's easier for me to just use my hands. So I'll just squeeze it, shred it up. Season well, and here you go. So now my chicken is shredded. So now I'm gonna blend my braising liquid. I'll just add it to the uh, chicken. Toss it around. I'll add some salt and lime. It'll bring it up a little, a level. Bam, bam, here's my braised chicken. All right, so I'm going to make my fries now. Emily, you'll be making crinkle cut fries. I recommend so that your potato isn't rolling around. Cut a little bit from the bottom so it's not moving. See, now it doesn't roll. I have this crinkle cutting tool. That's sort of like a knife, but has some wavy edges to it. Yeah, that's a crinkle cut fry, one could argue, right? Oh, I forgot to put my vinegar in. This is just white distilled vinegar and it'll keep my potatoes from getting all brown and icky and other stuff. I don't know, whatever it does. Make sure you put them in water so that they do not oxidize on you. Just because they turn into this really brown color that doesn't look as nice after you fry them. This is actually way easier than I thought it was gonna be. It looks intimidating, but like very doable. It's okay if they're a little uneven. Look, I'm making kinkle, <laughs> kinkle fried cries. Put them on here. So I have to dry these guys off because otherwise they will make my oil explode. Okay, I think these look dry enough. Let's get to frying them. So now I'm gonna refry some beans. So I'm gonna add some aromatics and spices to really bring them up. Got some strained beans. Pot onto medium high, neutral oil. While that is getting hot, I will cut the onion. Nice sizzle sound that we love. Do you see the pepper? I'm gonna crank this up to high. I am going to sweat it or saute it until it's cooked through. 
I'm gonna add one teaspoon of cumin, one teaspoon of chili powder. Give it a stir. At this point, I'm gonna add the beans. Nice sizzle sound. Some spices are starting to get stuck at the bottom of the pan, so I'll add some water and that'll kind of deglaze it again. Uh, I'm gonna lower the heat and let it cook for 10 minutes and then I will refry. It's been 10 minutes since the beans have been cooking. Now I am going to refry them. I will start by adding neutral oil to a hot pan. I like to refry my beans every once in a while just to add some creaminess to it. Just as we added the spices to hot oil, it'll bring other flavors out. That's the sound that I wanna hear. Now I'll drop everything in there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So all the aromatics start to pop up again. So it's been two minutes. Now I'm gonna take it off the stove and then blend. So add a little bit of water. These taste great. These are my uh, refried beans. Okay, the next thing I need to do is make my queso fundido. And I'm just gonna like, you know, put them together basically. Putting my pan on a medium heat and I'm going to add my oil, onion, and my garlic. And I'm just gonna cook these until they soften up a little. I feel like these are you know, pretty close. All right, cheese number one. They're delicious cheeses. I'm just sort of spreading it out so that it gets maximum coverage so we get the requisite meltage, if you will. All right, this is all melty. I think it's done. Loaded french fries, here I come. Now I'm gonna make my roasted jalapeno salsa. Jalapeno. Half an onion. The reason I wanna char these tomatoes is to kind of remove like raw tin flavor that it has from sitting in the, in the tin. Drizzle some uh, oil over it. Always add salt. I'm gonna pop this in the oven and broil it. Now I'm gonna blend them. I always like to add some cilantro. All right, let's blend. Smells delicious. Now the most important part of cooking is making sure that everything is seasoned and balanced. So I'm gonna add some lime juice. I love cooking with lime as it just brightens things up. Needs a little bit of salt. It doesn't feel heavy. The cilantro adds some freshness to the salsa. Lime juice complements that as well. This is my salsa. It's so pretty. Okay, it's time to do my first fry for my french fries. All right, these are gonna be in here for about five minutes, and then I'll take them out, do the next batch, and then on from there. So to achieve the best French fries, you have to blanch the fries before you fry them at a higher heat. What this does is that it cooks the potato all the way through. Otherwise, if you just fry it from raw, it will burn the exterior and the inside will still be raw. You're cooking it about 80 to 90% of the way. I'm cooking these at about 300 now, and then I'm gonna crank it up for my second fry. Because I can't just season French fries with salt, I'm gonna go a little extra and make jalapeno seasoning. I'll start by blending this cilantro with some jalapeno. Pop it on the tray, spread it out. Close the door, turn this on and set it to 125. In four hours, I will check this and I will have some nice and beautiful dehydrated jalapeno seasoning spice for my French fries. I'm gonna check a uh, my spice mix. This looks great. All right, I got my spice grinder here. Easy peasy. Lid on. Let's check this. Perfect. Mm -hmm. Spicy and herbaceous. These are looking about done, so I'm just gonna take them out. Set them aside. And done. All right, first batch done. I'm going to do the second batch and then everything's going into the fridge. We're gonna make uh, pickles. So I'm gonna use the slime and then the rest of the jalapeno and onions. Some thin slices. Add a little salt just so it breaks down a bit. I'm also gonna de-seed and de-vein this. Pinch of salt. Since I don't have vinegar, the lime juice will substitute. I'll just mix this, and then we just let it sit, marinate, and pickle. Fries are chilled, 
Time to do a second fry. The second fry is the best part because that's when you achieve a crispy potato. This second fry is hotter than the first one. Also more dangerous and scary. Now I'm gonna make my french fries. I don't need to blanch these because Mariah did that job for me. I have my oil set at 350 degrees Fahrenheit and then we'll just drop it. They're looking yummy. This is where I want my fries to be. Ooh, some of these are getting pretty brown, so I'm gonna pull out the ones that are already nice and brown and leave the ones that are not yet. All right, I better salt these before things start going awry. And then I'll just toss with some salt. All right, these are looking crispy. I'm going to pull them out and sprinkle them with salt. Salt, salt, salt. All right, fries are fried, let's keep moving. We're gonna season it with this beautiful jalapeno spice. Has a nice kick. Now that my fries are ready, it's time to make the final dish. The time has come to load the fries. I gotta make a big layer of fries here. I'm gonna do some chorizo now and then some chorizo after the cheese. So that feels right to me. I worked hard on that chorizo, so I want it to be like everywhere. Nice and green, stack that high. We'll add some of the refried beans. Hello, right? Look at that, look at that. Okay, cheese on and I'm gonna add some more chorizo and then we're gonna broil this for a couple minutes to get like extra cheesy joy. All right, I think this is ready. I'm gonna pop it in the broiler. Cheddar action. And because melted cheese is best, got my little friend right here. Okay, if it torches a little bit. All right, my skillet is out of the oven and I think it's looking pretty good. All right, so I have some tortillas here that I'm going to just kind of arrange. Like maybe you kind of just want that fan and then, or should I like scatter it? Plating's hard. I'll add my chicken next. Hefty portion on top. Nice dollop of salsa. Cut all of this with some peppers. Some cilantro, fresh cilantro. All right, I'm just putting some salsa on for a little extra brightness and heat. And just like, feels right. Perfect. All right, and these are my french fries. And this is my take on Chef Alon's french fries. <laughs> hey, how's it How going? Are you? <laughs> nice How to, are you? yeah, get in here. <laughs> How did How it go? It? it was really good here, how about you? Pretty easy. Yeah, pretty easy on my hand too. Struggle? <laughs> it, was, uh, it was a lot of steps for me, but it was really fun. All right. And I'm super excited to taste it all together. Me too. Woo! Whoa! Hey, look at this. You shredded the chicken? I braised the chicken, Uh huh. shredded it, mm -hmm. blend the sauce, mm -hmm. put it back in there. Mm -hmm. This looks so good. This chicken looks amazing. It's your recipe. Well, oh, hardly. <laughs> It's so good. The pickled vegetables are like- the Not onions. bad, right? Yeah, very tasty. I should go to culinary school. I didn't finish. Hey, <laughs> me neither. I didn't start, but- <laughs> mm, This is amazing. Just 12 years of experience <laughs> brought me here. Yeah. <laughs> this is the moment. Yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> I see a little like flex on the fries. So I dehydrated the jalapenos mm -hmm. with some chopped up um, cilantro in there. Mm. Uh, and then once it was dry, blended it and made a little jalapeno seasoning. Nice. That's what you were gonna do, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah, this is basically identical yeah, to yeah, yeah. what All I right. was thinking. All right. <laughs> um, well, I'm glad you liked it. Oh, so much. The chicken is like so tender and like flavorful. All right, and then I'm super excited to dig into this. I love queso fundido. Cheers. Cheers. Mm. I love the salsa cruda. So really tasty. cuts through that chorizo. Mm-hmm. Fattiness of the mm. cheese. Mm. And that chorizo is so good. French fried tacos. French fried taco. Mm-hmm. You did a great job. Thank you. I would buy this at your restaurant. I would buy this at your restaurant. All right. Thank you for making this. 